In this video, I'm going to look back at a lens I don't own anymore. The Leica Sumilux M 1.4 21mm ASP-H. A few weeks ago, I did an episode called Why Leica? Describing the history of how I became a Leica shooter. This episode is kind of a spin-off episode because I want to talk about a lens I bought and sold again. So if you are circling around that lens and thinking of buying it, this video maybe will help you. It's definitely the video I wish were around when I was thinking of buying the lens. And even though I already gave away that I don't own it anymore, I can already tell you selling the lens was not a decision against the lens, it was a decision for something else. But I'm going to talk about that later. So let's talk about the 21 Sumilox and let's get the technical specs out of the way first. The fastest aperture is, as I already said, 1.4. The minimum focus distance is 0.7 meters, so 70 centimeters, and it goes on to infinity. The lens is 60 millimeters long and weighs 580 grams. It has no filter thread, but you can use a filter. You need to unscrew the lens hood and put the filter between the lens hood and the glass and screw the lens hood back on. So you need a very special filter, it's called the Filter Series 8. Okay, so let me make a coffee while further talking about the lens. I bought my lens in the summer of 2020 together with my M10R. As a film director, I like to tell stories with characters with great depth. And visually, I also like to have great depth of field. I always try to stage my actors in great spatial depth, so I have the best depth of field. I use mostly prime lenses, so I have total control where the focus in the frame lies, and so I also have total control on where the focus in the story lies. As a photographer, I also like to use prime lenses. Not because I have the advantage of more light, because I have the advantage of more depth of field. The wider a lens, the harder it is to separate the foreground from the background. So that's why the 21 Sumilox was so appealing for me, because it has an open aperture of 1.4. So let's check out some of the pictures. Of course, when you have a wide angle lens like that, you want to take pictures of people as well. And you want them to separate from the background. Honestly, I never found a sweet spot where distortion is not a problem for the person. And at the same time, I can still clearly separate them from the background. Of course, it also depends how far away the background is. So the ideal situation is you have a person best positioned in the middle of the frame and then you have a wide background where you really can have the, the focus to fall off. When they're standing at a wall, of course, everything is sharp and you cannot separate them so good from the background, especially with a wide angle lens like that. When you have a setting, where you don't see the person's face or you have them from, from the back, it's much easier. Of course, you can distortion is not a, such a problem because you don't have the structure of a face in frame. With a 21 mm lens, even though you have an aperture of 1.4, if the person is too far away or the background is too close, you will not have the effect you are looking for. Let's talk about street photography. In classical street photography, I honestly struggled with that lens. Because either the people I have in frame are too far away or they're too close. I really, I really struggled with distances. Also, um, perspective lines, they can be very, very cool, especially on a wide angle lens. But somehow with a 21 millimeter, I really struggled with that and it just looked weird. I never found that, that really, that, that sweet spot again for the distances. Maybe it's not the lens, maybe it's my capability of shooting a wide-angle lens. So I struggled with the street photography. Then again, next to the possibility of having a great depth of field, the lens for me really shines when shooting architecture. Especially when you are able to position yourself in the exactly right spot. I personally liked when I was 90 degrees in front of a building or an object because the distortion for a building that is a little bit further away is absolutely not there. So you have really straight 
clear lines, even though you're shooting a 21 millimeter lens. For me, this was fascinating. And I did one, I did some of my favorite pictures of architecture with that lens. And of course, when you have a high value wide angle lens like that, we need to talk nature and landscape photography. In my opinion, when you stop it down to a four, it is sharp all over. And so it works perfectly for landscape and nature photography. I hear the Leica Super Elmar 21 mm 3.4 lens is the sharpest 21 mm lens for the amount. So if you only do landscape and if you don't need the depth of field and you don't need the 1.4 aperture, you're probably much better off with that lens because it's smaller. With uh, around $3,200, it's like less than half of the 21 Sumilox in cost. So if you only do landscape, if you have great distances, if you need sharpness all over, this is probably the much better lens for you. But I had the Sumilox, so I went out and did landscape as well with the Sumilox and the results, in my opinion, are fantastic. And last but not least, with a 21 mm lens like that, you can do really crazy and fun stuff. Because of course, the distortion a lens like that has can be used in a creative sense as well. And mostly I ended up doing that kind of photography. When I just took it out as my regular just go out and walk lens, as I told you, I struggled sometimes with distances and then I started to do crazy stuff with that lens. And I mean, don't get me wrong, this can be very creative and I really like wide angle photography and especially like going crazy with the wide angles and with the distortions and like buildings and that are not straight and stuff. So I, I really like that. When I went out with a specific wide angle goal or when I had to shoot something where I needed a wide angle lens, it was always satisfying. But of course, I also had fun with the lens when I was just running around without any wide angle goal. After owning the lens for about 30 months, I decided to sell the lens. It has nothing to do with the quality of the lens. I regularly reassess and check my gear. I check if, I, if it's still right for me and I check if I actually use the stuff I own. And I noticed that with the 21 Sumilux that I just don't use it that often. So it was basically one of the lenses I realized I, I, in, in terms of price and the, how much I use it, it's not in a good balance. So I decided to sell it. And at the same time, I also decided to sell my 35 Sumicron M lens because I had the feeling somehow when I moved to the 41 megapixel of the M10R that it was just not sharp. And it, it just couldn't handle the 41 megapixel or higher sensor. So I had my eye on the 35 Sumilox uh, M FLE, the first version, uh, which is a totally sharp 35 millimeter lens. And also at the same time, I still owned my 70 to 200 Panasonic F 2.8 zoom lens. And I was circling for quite some time around the Leica Oppo Vario Elmarit 90 to 200. So in my reassessment session, I decided to sell the 21 Sumilux, the 35 Sumicron, and the Panasonic 7200 with the teleconverter. And with that money, 
I traded basically in and got myself the 35 FLE and the 92280 with actually no extra cost. So I didn't have to spend any money. I just basically turned in the stuff I did not use that much and I got stuff which I really use since I changed that. So I am very happy I did that, but nevertheless, I sometimes look back on my 21 Sumilox and thinking, wow, this was a cool lens. I'm very happy that I owned that lens. And at some point, I think I will have a 21 millimeter again, but I will probably go for the Super Elmar because I don't use the 1.4 uh, that much in a wide angle lens. It's, it's, it, it sounded sexy to have, but in the end, the effect was not that useful for me. I do like wide angle photography. I own a 12 mm Voigtlander lens, which is so much fun. This is really just like the crazy lens. If you're interested to see what I do with the 12 mm Voigtlander, I did a dedicated video with that lens and you can check that out. I will put a link in the description. I hope this helped or inspired you to buy a 21 Sumilox or not buy it and buy something else. But if you buy the 21 Sumilox, I'm pretty sure you will have lots of fun. And if you have no problem shooting an M camera with a Visoflex or using it on DSL or shooting through the monitor, you will have much fun with that lens because it is a fantastic, very special lens with a very unique look. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and consider subscribing. I see you in the next video. Stay curious. Now I talked so much about the 21 Sumilox that I forgot to drink my coffee.